What up guys, Joachim here, aka Joachim Justin Morgan, aka Joachim the Convert. And this video I want to talk a little bit about my trip to Mount Athos. So uh, I had said that I was going to make some videos on that. I actually recorded one video while I was actually in Mount Athos and uh, I just haven't uploaded a lot and uh, been a little bit busy with work. And I've just been lazy about making videos, so, you know, full disclosure. Um, you know, this isn't like something that I do as like a full-time thing. It's just kind of, you know, I, I like YouTube. I like watching videos on YouTube. And uh, I like contributing to the world of internet orthodoxy and um, doing things and talking about, you know, my, my passion, my love for the church, for Christ, and for the Orthodox Church. Uh, so one thing, uh, just a real kind of quick story um, I was at Vatopedi, which is one of the 20 monast monastic communities that's on uh, Mount Athos. And uh, when we went in, one of the guys who was with me, a lot, a lot of guys that were with me were Englishmen. They were from England. The, the group that I traveled is called Friends of Mount Athos. So um, it, it was primarily, you know, people from England. And uh, one of the, the Englishmen that I was with asked a great question. He said, do you have to do anything to become a monk? Like, is there an education process? Do you go to like college or something? And, or how, how does that work? And Father Matthew was uh, one of, he was actually an American monk who had gone to, to, to Mount Athos. Um, I think he said there was only six uh, at Vatopedi. So I, there's probably more than six Americans. And I, sometimes they included like English and Americans in the same category. So I, I don't know if he meant six Americans or just six native English speakers. Um, but, you know, so there's that. But uh, his response to it was that, no, you know, you you just kind of, uh, it's on-the-job training. You learn to be a monk by doing the work of a monk. You go, you say the daily prayers, you you go to, you know, the, the services, you um, participate in the life of the monastic community, and you learn to be a monk through that process of doing that. And uh, th this was kind of encouraging to me because it, in many ways I saw that the life of a monk is not really different than the life of a layperson Christian, which, I mean, for in a lot of cases, the, the monks, they're, they're actually not clergy. They, they actually are, um, they've sworn monastic vows, so that is different than a regular cl clergy per or a regular layperson, but in many ways they are just lay people. Um, so they're lay people who have made this commitment and, you know, we also, as lay people outside of monastic communities, we also have similar commitments that we've sworn when we were um, baptized in the church. Maybe you were baptized at birth, you kind of, your parents swore those for you, I guess. Um, but, you know, we, we make pledges, we, we, you know, become part of the church, we learn the lifestyle of the Orthodox Christian, we, we say the prayers the same way that they do. Maybe they're a little more, um, uh, or well, they're a little less uh, worked out for us, like the, the monastic communities have certain times, you know, this has to happen at this time, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. You know, for lay people, you know, maybe we have a easier prayer rule that we follow, but we still have the same concept of a prayer rule. We still have uh, the daily prayers of the church that we say. Typically, morning and evening prayers are kind of like a, a minimum that most people do. And, uh, you know, maybe those have different viewpoints that could range anywhere from just saying the Our Father prayer all the way up to very significant prayer rules that, you know, you find in normative prayer books like uh, Jordanville, uh, Jordanville's prayer book. I have several actually right here. Um, so this is uh, kind of the one my family primarily uses, Orthodox Christian prayer book. Uh, it is by New Rome Press, and that's their symbol. Uh, you see on that, um, we always read from the Psalms as part of that. We don't do the entire prayer rule. Um, we kind of do for the, the, a lot of the morning prayers, but, you know, for the evening prayers, we don't do the whole thing every day. Uh, we split it up throughout the week. Um, the prayers make up a substantial, no, sorry, the Psalms make up a substantial part of our, our prayer rule. Um, this is the daily, the calendar of the saints. So we, we typically read from that every day. Um, we don't say, this is not an Orthodox book, so we don't say all of these. We only say uh, usually St. Patrick's Breastplate and uh, things that are in there. I think uh, St. Patrick's Eve Song is one we typically say. Um, so we're a little bit careful about that one just because it's not by an Orthodox author. author and I, I know from personal experience that the author of this book actually um, deliberately leaves out things that he thinks... Um, you know, where he deliberately does not include prayers that 
uh, conflict with his theological beliefs. So this is not really, like it says, uh, prayers from the ancient Celtic Orthodox Church. That is not entirely accurate. It's prayers from the ancient Celtic Orthodox Church that Paul C. Stratman um, did not disagree with. So um, I don't really find a lot of prayers to the saints, veneration of Mary, which are the things you would absolutely see throughout the prayers that he includes in this. So the fact that he doesn't include them uh, demonstrates his own bias. So this is, uh, you know, a little bit manipulative, I think. Uh, this is a Western Rite um, book from the Antiochian Archdiocese, a book of common prayer. Um, when I'm uh, saying prayers on my own, I, I like to use that one. So that's just a few of others. Um, but you know, whatever, you know, there's kind of different ways of doing that. So just, just some examples. But in the same way that the monks have a certain um, lifestyle uh, that they follow, we as lay people have a very similar thing that is meant to bring us into the church, that is meant to bring us into Christ. We go to the liturgy, we go to confession, we participate in the overall life of the church. And by doing that, in the same way that monks uh, learn to become a monk through on-the-job training, through doing those things, and through participating in the life of the monastery, we as lay people do exactly the same thing. There are my biggest lesson that I learned throughout this trip, which I will I will bring up in other videos, was that you, in fact, as a lay person, uh, you really have very much the same um, responsibilities, the same lifestyle. We're just doing it outside of the monastery. So I, I walked away actually with a very high. Um, view of my r role and responsibility as an Orthodox Christian layperson um, from my trip at Mount Athos. So hopefully um, I can share some other videos soon and I won't be too lazy about uh, keeping up with that. But, uh, you know, there are more important things in life than making YouTube videos. You know, I have a wife, I have three kids. My kids are busy. They're off in uh, um, doing uh, band and my son's in the Navy, which... Uh, you know, it takes up a little bit of time for us because we need to go see him. Um, my, you know, I, I teach fifth grade at a, at a school. I'm at a Catholic school this year that requires some planning. You know, I have a lot of things to consider with that and grading papers and uh, making sure that I'm doing the best that I can as an educator and to uh, teach the kids um, in the subjects that I teach, which include history, um, social studies, geography, and uh, then also English language arts and expressions or, or writing. Uh, so, you know, those are all things that I am responsible to teach the fifth graders at uh, a school, a Catholic school that I teach at. So, uh, you know, I have other things that I do other than YouTube, but uh, so I'm not entirely just being lazy. Um, I am investing my time in ways that I think is wise and that is beneficial to things that I think are important. But, you know, YouTube is uh, something I'm passionate about and uh, hopefully sharing these uh, videos help connect you guys to the church. It helps uh, increase your love and, and desire uh, to be part of the church, uh, particularly the orth when I when I say the or the church, I'm talking about the Orthodox Church. And uh, hopefully I'm a source of encouragement to those of you within the church. So you guys take it easy and I'll talk to you in a video coming very soon.